fight, big fight coming up. Yeah. You've worked hard for this one on, on the old social networking. I get the impression that's not usually your way of doing things. Absolutely not. I, um, I don't have a big massive promoter. I'm promoted by Murphy's Boxing Promotions USA and I don't have a fortunate uh, of promotion from Sky and from Eddie Hearn and, you know, to get the big fights like that. So I needed to uh, promote myself and call Chris out via social media and get the fight I wanted. He seems to have taken it a little bit personally. Yeah, poor baby Chris. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about Chris that makes you think that you can win this fight as easily as you're projecting? Well, um, I think he's hyped up uh, to be a great fighter. He's a good fighter, he's not a great fighter. Um, he's very hittable. Um, I think there's proper fights out there for me, uh, which would be less, you get less of everything. You know, less money, less promotion, less publicity. You know, so it's an absolute no-brainer. Chris, I see, has an easier fight than other guys out there. And you get a lot more money and a lot more publicity. And it just makes sense. Everything just makes sense about the fight. Absolutely. What was the, um, I mean, I asked you, I asked, actually asked Steve this, not your, your coach. What was behind you fighting in America so consistently after the loss to Billy Joe? Was it just a case of just kind of getting your confidence back up and getting some rounds in and getting some good fights and good, good victories? Well, it's a different style of fighting over there. Um, I think uh, 9 out of 10 of the Americans beat the Europeans, the higher class guys, and I've been doing some good sparring out there and got a few fights in out there. And, you know, it's, it's been good, a good experience. I've been away from home, it's good, good stuff. Are you looking forward to fighting at the O2 to show a bigger audience in this country what you can do? Um, absolutely, can't wait. I fought at the O2 actually, my first fight in the UK. And I won by knockout in the first round, and I think it's going to be the same as another result, another knockout in December 12th. And um, the bigger the occasion, the better the spike. Um, I love the big occasions. So I fought in Sky twice before. I fought Anthony Fitzgerald. I knocked him out in one round. I fought Melvin Bettencourt, the undercard of uh, James De Gale and um, and Villarreal. And uh, I I won by second round knockout again. And the bigger the occasion, the bigger the arena, the better I become. I try on it. I love it. I started off fighting in small town halls in front of a hand few, handful of people, and uh, I just dreamed of this opportunity. And I'm going to take it with both hands, no doubt. How come you've been so busy this year? This is your busiest year as a professional fighter, right? Well, i got to uh, thank my promoter, Ken Casey, of Murphy's Boxing, for that. And, uh, you know, keeping me busy, getting me the fights and bringing me out to America. He's a great guy. And um, I'll be hearing plenty about him when I'm world champion. Are there any of the victories that um, Chris has had that you you kind of thought, oh, that was, that was good, or just everything's gone as you expected it to go? Um, I think the latter. I think uh, it's gone as expected. In my opinion, you know, he's, he's, he's like any other fighter being built up, you know, and uh, he's, that's, that's what I'm asking. he's got he's got his opponents well selected, you know, and they've done a good job. And, you know, I think his, his father is money mad and, you know, he got him into one fight with Billy Joe Saunders. He got, he got beat, you know, it's like, Did you make that fight? Did you think he was, he lost that fight? I think he lost the fight. Uh, Chris, I think, is a bit deluded about that. Uh, I think even his coach, Adam Boot, also uh, said he lost that, you know, lost that fight. So... Uh, but I think he took the defeat terribly. Uh, I think he dwells in it. I think it's, uh, you know, hasn't done him good at all. Uh, whereas I got beat by the same man, by Billy Joe Saunders. I took it like a man, I got beat in fair and square, and I held my hands up, and the better man won on the night. Uh, but I went back to the gym and analysed it and where I went wrong and worked very hard on becoming a better fighter. See a rematch with Billy Joe in the future? Absolutely. Um, when I deal with um, Chris Eubank Jr., he's a stone on my road. I just need to get him out of there. And um, then I'm going to go on and fight the winner of um, Peter Quill and Danny Jacobs, who are two very good fighters. It's a 50-50 fight. Good one for the fans. I don't know who's going to win it, but uh, I fancy my chances. I think on my night, I can beat either one of them, win the WBA title. And uh, Billy Joe Saunders wins the WBO. We can have a unification match. I was going to say, 20, 20, 2016 could be a big, massive year for you. Looking forward to it. Mm. Can't wait. Hopefully, get a hopefully be me and Billy Joe Saunders fighting for the um, well, to become the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. And uh, when I beat him, I'll buy him a nice gold caravan. <laughs> before, I was going to end on that now, but before I go, just just to clarify, what was the dark stuff that uh, Chris was alluding to that you said on Twitter that made him uh, made him the way he was today? I honestly have no idea what he was alluding to there, to be honest I'm with you. I'm going to ask him the same questions, so I just thought I'd ask you first. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually know what he was alluding to. Um, I did give him a, a good bit of grief on it to make the fight happen. You know, um, I don't think I went below the belt if I did. 
I apologise for my. I actually meant nothing by it, and it was not. It's not even personal with me. I don't even hate Chris. I don't know the bloke to hate him. You know, it's business, man. I got three daughters, beautiful daughters, to provide for. You know, and I need to provide for their future. And um, Chris is just the unfortunate person to be. He's the guy, you know, with the with the name, with the the media, with the hype, you know, and he's just the unfortunate guy that's there. It could have been anybody. Thank you, Tom.